Hey, uh, welcome. We're in my living room at the moment, and I've just woken up, so that's probably why I look a bit tired. Um, just going to talk about some of the nerdy stuff that I like. Uh, I've got my Justice for All poster here, which I've had since I was about 16. I've just put it in a better frame, and I didn't think my wife would let me put it up in the lounge, but she did. She let me, so that was cool. There's tinsel up because at the moment of filming, it's the 20th, I think, of December, and uh, that's why there's tinsel everywhere. You'd think that that was kind of obvious, but I did see a comment on a video recently asking what the ring on the wedding ring finger of my left hand was, so sometimes you have to be specific. The answer isn't the question. Um, see, these are some of the albums I like. I have about six vinyls. I thought I was going to start collecting vinyl about, I don't know, six years ago, and I just stopped after these. And I don't have a record player, but I, I just like having <laughs> the artwork out. So, uh, Sepultura, Arise, one of my favorite albums, obviously Injustice for All. I used to collect Cannibal Corpse stuff when I was a kid. Uh, this is like an old VHS I got when I was about like 14. Uh, just like super nerdy stuff. It doesn't really, there's a bit of a contrast next to Buddha here. Um, that's sort of like me and my wife. She's a yoga teacher and I like death metal and stuff. Um, I've got a bunch of graphic novels down here. Nerdy, nerdy stuff. A lot of Batman. There's a lot of uh, Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. Preacher. I haven't read anything in a long time. I don't have the time to anymore. And these are some of my guitars. Uh, this acoustic, I got given, I, no, I didn't get given that. I stole it off my wife's dad, who didn't really play it. So I pinched that years ago. Uh, this is an old uh, Michael Wilton guitar that I've had. I had repainted black and I sold it in 2011 maybe to Faisal who now plays bass in Loathe and I just bought it back off him. Um, now it's got the Fishman pickups in there and then a lot of people will have seen me play this one. Uh, my Eclipse Silverburst which is probably one of my favourite finishes and uh, yeah, that's it. But anyway, I'll take you through into my uh, home studio now. Right, so uh, this is my home recording studio, which used to be the garage, or garage if you're American, on the side of our house. And it's uh, just like a brick room. And then my father-in-law, who's a carpenter, turned it into a sort of semi-soundproof room. So there's like a room within a room. There's a bit of a gap, and then there's a stud wall and uh, acoustic insulation and then acoustic plasterboard. So I can make quite a bit of noise in here. I can like reamp guitars and mic up my amps and stuff. Um, I've just been getting really nerdy over speakers recently, thanks to my friend Nolly, who's uh, got me into the world of speakers from different years, sounding different. Um, so these are a bunch of uh, like amps I've got. The Triple Rectifier, which is amazing. My old Dan Gower modded Plexi. Um, got a bunch of guitars here. This is another one that I had I think I got this in 2007, and I think I sold it in 2009 or something, and messaged the guy last year who I sold it to, and he still had it, and he sold it back to me, which is cool. So I use that for, for all the um, leads on the new album, or at least most of them. And this is another one I got from ESP uh, about three or four years ago, and I recorded all the main rhythm guitars on this one got the Fishman uh, Fluence Moderns in it and I th think it's my favourite sounding guitar because I like those bridges the best and then this is a custom that I got uh, the first custom guitar I've ever received and it was made in Japan uh, currently in C sharp it's got an Evertune bridge which is really really useful but um, Tonally, I'm not sure I'd, I like it as much as the uh, Tunematic Bridge, so it's more of a live guitar at the moment. 
So uh, the amp that I used on the album was this uh, 6505 Plus uh, on the Rhythm channel, surprisingly, and I was shooting it out against um, my friend's block letter at the time, and I didn't have this 5150 at the time, and the only way I could get like the mid-range to sound the same was on the Rhythm channel, and there's so much mids, and I think those are the settings that were used and the mids are like on one or something and it's still super mid-rangey so don't always worry about scooping your mids because sometimes there's a lot on the amp but um yeah so that was that was the one for the album um that one was actually a gift from the guys in architects actually i remember spoke to tom in at the start of 2016 i was like do you have a hookup for someone at uh, pv because i'm thinking of getting a 5150 and he was like, oh, we've got an old 6505 plus that you can have. Um, and he was like, yeah, you can just have it, which is super kind of him. But that's uh, the kind of guy Tom was. So that was actually um, uh, a gift. And it's, I didn't use it specifically out of uh, like sentimental reasons or anything. It just happened to be the exact sound that I wanted to at the time. So I'm very grateful for, for that gift. Um, as for guitar picks, at the moment I kind of flip flop between all kinds of stuff. I always used to use these 1.14s pretty much my whole life and then uh, just tried, tried various things out over the last few years. This is like what I use the most at the moment, the kind of Jazz 3 style Tortex greens which are a bit thinner and actually more recently I've been getting into the, I don't even know what this is. The yellow Tortex, this is a custom one, so I don't know, it doesn't say what size it is. Um, so I use uh, usually like a thinner pick when I'm recording, because they have like a nicer thwip, <laughs> a pick attack. Um, but live, the thicker the pick, the tighter I play, so I kind of gravitate towards these at the moment for just everything, and the sharper points better for like the kind of lead stuff. So I use these Fishman pickups. Um, I've been using them now for about three years. And they're essentially, they're, they're powered, but they're sort of like act, uh, powering the technology as opposed to the, the pickup. So they have uh, an active sound and a passive sound, uh, both within the same pickup. I tend to use just the active for everything, the active voicing. Um, they're just like super clear and focused and I've used active pickups a lot in the past there's just something about these that just feels really good for me and um, I think I've like been nerding out over bridges recently I recently got a guitar with like a, a flatter hip shop style bridge and I was really surprised at the like, lack of low end in the tone and I've realised that these and the Floyd Rose are my favourite sounding bridges um, which is super nerdy, but uh, I kind of spend all my time nerding out over tone and stuff. So little differences and all along the way of your whole rig can make a big difference. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's what I mean. So the uh, album artwork, uh, believe it or not, was done on an iPad with an Apple Pencil and um, the the reason I started like drawing it initially was kind of uh, just like like a I don't know just subconsciously just doodling because um we had I, I did a flight in uh, early 2018 from LAX to I think Salt Lake City on a tour and uh, just as we were taking off the plane just went like doo -doo, like hit this big air pocket. And it just set me off with like a bit of a fear of flying, which I've never had before and I've flown fine my whole life. And I realized that doing something creative or like, like either working on music or drawing or something that kind of, I guess, switches your brain over to like that creative side, uh, really took my mind off flying. So um, a lot of the album cover was actually done on flights on the iPad. So I've, um, I've got a few different <clears throat> I haven't saved everything along the way, but uh, this is kind of 
how it was originally <clears throat> and then I think I expanded on it uh, later on I don't have like every step by step saved so I sound like a frog because um, I've just woken up so uh, as you might be able to see already um, <clears throat> I uh, just worked on one side of the image and then mirrored it later on to create that the symmetrical effect so that's kind of the finished piece as it was uh, when the artwork itself was finished and then I did some like color correction and like a mirror image and then um, Dan Goldsworthy who has done artwork for us before did some like really cool borders and, and did the rest of the layout for the album um, so yeah a bit of a weird I've, I've never really done artwork for us before and it's kind of just uh, I didn't really have anything in mind specifically when I was creating this image but it was uh, born out of me being anxious on a flight or many flights so this was like the product of uh, this summer just gone of just doing festivals and flying out and actually we did a tour in Australia as well and just uh, a lot of flights and a lot of time just spent doodling and chipping away at this and just kind of not really overthinking it too much and I think it just kind of fits the vibe of the album so uh, yeah that's how it comes out. Yeah!